Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Last week we processed one of my old negatives and we found that through split grade printing we could get more detail, more contrast, a punchier uh, photograph from that negative. And of course as we progressed with that we realised that the negative was a bit flat. It really needed more development but it was already developed. So how was I going to do that? Well, there is a way of doing that. And the way this week I'm going to show you is intensification. I'm going to intensify that negative. So this is a negative that I printed last week. We can see that this run of negatives especially were rather flat. And so I use split grade to try to punch it up a bit, to try to increase the contrast. And we didn't do too badly, but I'd like to do better if I can. So this week we're going to look at how we can actually do an N plus development on negatives that have already been developed. Now I'm not going to redevelop these negatives this week. What I'm going to do is take this particular negative and I'm going to give it N plus development through a thing called intensification. We're going to use selenium toner to intensify this negative and increase it in contrast. And then I'll print you the negative again and we'll see what it looks like compared to last week. Let's get over to the darkroom and have a go. Here is our selenium toner. And normally I use these on prints if I want to actually increase the contrast of the print or in fact to make it archival. But what we're going to do today is use this on a negative. I've got the negative, it's here. Um, I very carefully cut it and at the moment I have some water in here, 100 milliliters of water at around about 20 degrees centigrade. The temperature doesn't have to be precise but I like to run most of my processes at around about 20 anyway. So I'm going to dilute the selenium in the water one plus one. That's very strong and you'd never use it that strong on prints but that works very well with negatives. Now you have to be careful with selenium toner. You don't want to be breathing in the fumes of this or getting it on your skin. So I have eye protection, I have gloves on and I'm going to put this in here with full ventilation. I have the door open and I have the fan running at the moment. So let's get our selenium toner. We'll open it up. and I'll add it. Now it doesn't matter which if you do first water to selenium or selenium to water it's fine either way. So I'll add it in here and I'll be very careful not to breathe in the fumes. So there she is round about one plus one. You could use one plus two, one plus three. Any of those kind of dilutions will work for you. Let's pop the top on this before there's an accident. Always, always get the tops on your chemicals straight away. Don't leave them open. And I'm going to give that a stir. Let's get my stirring rod here. There we are. Give it a stir. Make sure it's well stirred in there. Very good. I'll pop that into the bottom of this wash water. I've got some water here ready in the sink that I'm going to wash the negative in when it's finished. Now we will put this negative into this selenium toner and we're going to leave it for about five to ten minutes. Basically it's going to fully, fully tone if you like in the selenium toner. So I'm just going to pop it in there gently and carefully and make sure that the emulsion side is facing upwards. Let me bring this to the camera so you can see. So there's the negative inside. I can already see it's changed. It's already intensified a little. But I'm going to leave it in there for five to ten minutes with occasional agitation. I'll agitate it with this by just picking it up and moving it around. Be very gentle. The emulsion will get soft, so don't touch the emulsion. Try to just touch the edges. Keep your gloves on 
keep full ventilation and let's come back to this in five minutes time. So the negative's been in this now for six or seven minutes and it's probably um, developed a completion in that selenium. So all I need to do now is take it out at such a high concentration, one plus one, um, it's going to finish quite quickly. I don't think you need to leave it in for a great length of time. So I've got to be very careful not to scratch it. And if I can't get it out easily with that, I'm going to use uh, one of my plastic mixers. Let's get one of these. And whoops, sorry if I bang the camera. And I will just ease. There we go. Just ease it up so that I can pick it up with these tongs. I don't want to touch the emulsion, so I'm trying to be very careful not to touch it. I could use my gloves. I could get my fingers in there, which would probably be easier. But I just thought I'd bring it out like that. So there it is. Um, I don't suppose you can see it very clearly, but it looks definitely intensified to me. So now it's time to wash it. I'm going to give it a really good wash for about 15 minutes in the sink, very carefully. I've laid some old prints at the bottom of the sink so it won't get scratched. And I'll make sure I have the emulsion side upwards. There it goes. It's already in there. So I'll come back to you in a few more minutes. The negative's been washing now for about 15 minutes. So I've been running water over it. So now I'm going to very carefully take it out. Of course, there's no selenium anymore, so I don't have to worry about getting it on my fingers. There's none left. It's all washed away. And now I'm going to hang up the negative to dry. Let's just pop a clip on it and she'll dry. And we'll come back to that when it's dry and make a new print. I always like to show you comparisons on this channel to show you what I've done. So here is the intensified negative right next to the one I cut it from. So you can see the difference is considerable. It's definitely intensified. N plus development without developing after the fact. So instead of being flat, we've got a lot more contrast in our intensified negative. But where the rubber hits the road is in the print. So I'm going to make a print for you now and we'll compare it to last week's print. Let's do some comparisons then. So this is last week's grade two print, straight grade two, nothing else, just grade two. And it was okay, but we knew it was flat. And that's this week's grade two print. Now look at the difference. That is quite a difference. That's at least a grade difference there between these two prints. Try and get the light up there for you. There we are. So much punchier after intensification. The intensified print is on the left hand side. Look at the mountains in the background. You can see that they are more defined and better, to, easier to see. So that is a straight grade two. And let's have a look now at last week's manipulated. So this was grade three. Remember, I decided to move up to grade three for the general print because it was a little flat at grade two. And then I gave it grade five in the sky. We can see the sky came in and some grade five. And I added one stop, basically one stop extra of grade five across the print. And this is this week's. See if we can compare the two. I'll keep this week's on the left. And if I can get the light out of the way, I'm sorry about the light, but there we have it. Look at the difference. Look at the, how do I do this best? <laughs> Look at the two prints next to each other. There we are. And I think you'll agree that on the left hand side, we have definitely increased our, 
whole contrast of the print. Look at these um, here. These are like pylons, electrical pylons. And look how much clearer they are on this one, much clearer. And yet we've still got the lovely line of the road disappearing into the distance. We've got really nicely defined, better def definition to the mountains in the intensified print. And I think the sky too is better. I think that, the, look at these, there's more cloud here. There's more, a better sky in the intensified print. That is an improvement. So I'm very pleased about that improvement. Selenium intensification. How to take a flat negative and give it some punch, give it some zing. I have at least have a zone, I have a good zone improvement there. Very good. Let's just talk about the advantages and any disadvantages of selenium intensification. The obvious advantage, at least to me, is that this gives us an N plus development, basically, for our negative after the event, which is wonderful. Now, when we talk about an N plus, it's about N plus one. We're talking about an extra grade. So we are getting a grade more contrast in our negative. Now, if we're struggling to print our negative and it's coming in at grade four, say, it's too flat. The negative's too flat and it wasn't developed for long enough. This intensification will give us an extra grade. So if we're struggling and we're in grade four, it will mean that we'll be able to print it at grade three, which is a much better grade to be printing at. The reason I say that is because if we're printing at grade four, we're losing highlight definition. We're losing nuances. Remember, grade zero affects the highlights mostly and is very soft and has all those nuances in the highlights. And grade five, the exact opposite, is very tough on highlights. They're, they're white, but it affects the shadows a lot. So if we're intensifying, we can bring our grade from grade four down to grade three or from grade three down to grade two. So it is helpful in that way. As I say, it can be done after the event. So if we have a strip of negatives that we've processed and we've maybe done normal development, and then we realize that either some of them or all of them are flat, that we underdevelop them, then we can use selenium intensification to regain uh, that development that we should have given them. So it's advantageous for that. It's a really good tool in our toolkit. Individual negatives can be processed. So if most of our negatives are okay, but there's one or two uh, or a few that, that need that extra development that they weren't given originally, we can cut those off and we can give them extra development by this N plus development intensification. So after the event, cutting out a negative and be able to give it that extra grade is a great trick. It's a great tool to have in our toolbox. There's less grain. And the reason I say that is because when we develop for longer, we increase the grain in our negative. And so less development, less grain. So normal development will give us the, the um, optimum grain. And if that's a bit flat, we can then intensify it without increasing the grain size on our negative. So we ultimately get less grain in our prints or in our scans. You can reuse the selenium toner. So I made a one plus one dilution and I can put that away in a bottle and reuse it again and again. And it will work many, many times until basically the selenium has run out. It's been used up um, in converting the silver um, on the negative. Disadvantages. Well, with pyro negatives, if you use pyro, 510 pyro or pyro cat or any of those staining developers, you will lose the stain if you're intensifying with selenium. So that can be a disadvantage because the stain is actually giving you more contrast. 
So if you lose that, you're losing contrast and then putting it back with the intensification. So you might end up having no improvement, but basically just having the same. Next week, we're going to look at how we can do this with pyro negatives and how um, we can have the double advantage of a pyro negative and an intensified negative, but that's for next week. So give me a like, subscribe, and next week you'll see just what I'm talking about.